Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Plain Bagel. I'm your host, Richard Coffin. Over the past couple of weeks, you might have heard that there's hoopla in the finance space. And if you follow finance content online, you've probably seen the allegations that Indian super conglomerate Adani Group is currently pulling off, quote, the largest con in corporate history. It all starts on January 24th when forensic finance research company Hindenburg Research, named after the Zeppelin that crashed in the 1930s, clever, tweeted out that, quote, soon we'll release a report on what we strongly suspect to be the largest corporate fraud in history. The tweet blew up, garnering 8 million views, and later in the day, Hindenburg Research released a short seller report on the company Adani Group and its founder, Gautam Adani, which had many people in North America asking, who? But for anyone in Asia, or more specifically India, the name probably rings a bell. Gautam Adani is, after all, Asia's richest man, and in fact, last year briefly surpassed Jeff Bezos as the second richest person in the world. And he's built this wealth on the back of Adani Group, which is an empire of companies covering industries ranging from ports and gas to green energy and even food oils. So needless to say, it was pretty shocking when a short seller report came out about this massive firm, and it's since caused the Adani companies that are publicly listed to fall in price, with the value of the companies dropping anywhere from 14 to nearly 50% over the span of roughly a week. Now the report is available online. I have gone through it myself so that you don't have to, but what exactly is Adani Group accused of? Well, quite a bit, and I'll do my best to summarize exactly what's going on, but there are quite a lot of details. At a very, very high level, however, the report is basically a list of receipts that show suspicious transactions, undisclosed relationships, and it's stuff that ultimately amounts to allegations of stock price manipulation and earnings manipulation. You see, Adani Group has seven publicly traded companies, and these stocks have appreciated by 819% over the past three years alone, which has made Gautam a lot of money. And Hindenburg argues that the fundamentals for these companies don't support these stock valuations. Many of these firms don't generate consistent positive cash flows. There are concerns around leverage and the fact that the company has used its own stock as collateral for some of its loans. And Hindenburg believes that the sky high valuations are the result of fraud, with the report then going into seven different parts to explain this belief. The first bit talks about how there are offshore funds and shell companies with ties to Adani Group that own a significant amount of the company's shares where that relationship is not disclosed publicly, with some of the funds having upwards of 99% of their money in Adani shares. And the researchers highlight that these funds help control the stock's price by carrying out trades that are not being highlighted as insider trading and make up a good amount of the stock's trading volume. And it doesn't help that Adani Group itself has already been caught up in multiple stock rigging scandals in the past. There was a 2007 ruling against the firm that found that it had worked with a notorious stock manipulator to bolster its price. And it gets even messier because even members of Gautam's family, his younger brother, his older brother, his brother-in-law, uh, true band of brothers, many of which have been uh, promoted to executives within the Adani Group set of companies, they have a history of being investigated for fraud and schemes in the past, including one diamond trading scheme. So right away, it's not looking good. <laughs> this company is basically being run by the CryptoZoo team. But it doesn't stop there with the report going on to accuse Adani Group of using offshore shell companies to move money in and out of the Adani Group to basically bolster its profit figures and its accounting statement. Uh, with it being especially concerning that many of these offshore entities were owned by Gautam's brother, Vinod. In fact, the report claims to have identified 38 shell entities controlled by Gautam's older brother, all of which have very suspicious websites, no listed employees, and at times, no seeming activity at all. And the report goes on to highlight undisclosed related party transactions, where at times, for example, a shell company will absorb an asset right before it's written down to a save Adani group from reporting a write-off. And in addition to the stock price manipulation, the accounting manipulation, the report goes on with the last four parts to highlight how the company lacks financial controls, how it potentially misappropriated taxpayer funds, the fact that institutional investors have avoided the firm like the plague, and instances where it seems the Adani Group has used intimidation and harassment to basically shout down critics. And the report concludes with Hindenburg Research asking 88 questions to Adani Group to clarify what the hell is going on? Now, Adani Group has since replied, they've released a 413 page rebuttal, uh, which don't worry, I'm not gonna go through all of that. Most of it is just court documents to prove their innocence in some of these accusations. Um, and a lot of it is also the company highlighting that they've simply done nothing illegal, that a lot of this stuff was done by the books. 
and that all this is superficial and that's really Hindenburg research that's breaking the law by, you know, basically spreading this slander, even claiming that Hindenburg hates India. But ironically, parts of this response do seem to confirm some of Hindenburg's suspicions. For example, they highlight that Gautam's brother Vinod, who is the guy who owned all the shell companies dealing with the company, they argue that he is not a related party and therefore they don't need to report those related party transactions. Uh, despite the fact that according to Indian securities law, that's not the case. Brothers of company founders, surprise, <laughs> are related parties. And Hindenburg Research has since released their own response, basically highlighting that the rebuttal does actually confirm a lot of their points, that it doesn't answer many, many of their questions. Um, and also highlighting that they actually like India, just in case. Uh, anyone was worried about that part. And that's basically where we are today. It's an uh, ongoing drama, if you will. Um, and people are calling for investigations, naturally, especially because some have pointed out ties between the Donnie group and certain lawmakers, including with Gautam and the Prime Minister of India themselves. And with a lot of investigations against the Donnie group having been stonewalled over the years, uh, some people think there might be a deeper corruption story behind all of this. But while this does look bad for Donnie group, there is another discussion coming up because of the situation around the role of short sellers and how they should conduct themselves in the markets. Uh, because if you forgot from the GameStop fiasco, people do not like short sellers. And there is some justified reason for that. Because obviously they will make money if they convince people that a stock will fall in price and cause people to sell the position or actually short it. In fact, it's quite common for short sellers to do this type of marketing where they come up with a negative thesis and whether accurate or not, going on a big marketing spree to push this narrative around to help push the stock price lower, thereby helping them make money on the position, which some obviously might have an issue with. And because of that, it is worth remembering that a lot of this report, while it does have evidence of suspicious activity, a lot of it is speculation. And only time will tell what the truth of the situation is. I do obviously think there's a lot of fishy stuff happening here and you do not like to see that as a public investor. Uh, but there are some points in the report that, for example, um, don't hold a whole lot of merit. At first glance, evaluations do seem stretched. I haven't done a very deep dive into these companies. The report does not touch at all about the growth these companies have seen and the fact that some of them are just now turning profitable, uh, which you know can cause multiples to seem very skewed to the upside. But if the trend continues of this company going from a negative earnings to a positive earnings, then in a couple years time, that valuation will moderate as you know earnings stabilize. For a report that talks about fundamental value, there isn't really any fundamental analysis within it. It doesn't talk about what these companies even do. And none of these points are to highlight that there's nothing concerning happening with the Donnie Group. You just have to keep in mind what is evidence and what is speculation when going through these short seller reports. Nonetheless, while this might be an unpopular opinion, short sellers do play an important role in bringing information to the market. Yes, they are a very loud group whenever they have a negative thesis, uh, but at times they have revealed very concerning things and even at times criminal activity that would go unnoticed probably if we only had long investors. There are actually quite a few research reports that show that short sellers help with price discovery and controlling valuations to be more reflective of a company's fundamental value because they are that force that will depress a company's stock price when the business is not doing well and when you come across fraudulent or at the very least fishy activity. Um, so worth considering as well. But that's a story as it currently stands and more is likely to come of this and we'll have to wait and see. So thank you for joining me. I do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any thoughts on the story, do let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It does help the channel tremendously. And until next time, be safe out there.